Hello everybody. I know a lot of people have been wanting a tutorial on video input and tonight the stars all aligned for me because I got the mythical A100 processor which is the best processor you can get on Google Colab and you do have to have a Google Colab Pro Plus account which I have had and never gotten it before. So this is the very first time I've got it so let's make some good use of it and make a video here using a starting video. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So we're not going to even need to change very many settings. Here is our animation mode under animation, settings, animation settings. So you just expand this and select video input. Then you take your video file and click and drag it over here to your folder. So I did that here with this 512 input. Then you right click it, hit copy path, and then go over here to video input and you paste it in there. And let's see if there's any other settings here. I don't believe any of these other settings will matter too much. Um, let's go ahead and run it like this, and I'll show you some of the settings that do matter a lot besides the... Oh, I, let me correct myself. This setting right here under the init path, extract nth frame. Right now I have it at 1. So um, as an example, if, you're, if your input video is 200 frames and it's at 1, it's going to render 200 frames. It's going to render every frame of the video. This can save you time, like I can put it to two, and then it will only render every other frame in the video. So if I put this to two, it would turn a 200 frame video into a 100 frame video. So basically you can lower your frames per second. If I put it to four, it's going to only render every fourth frame, so it would turn a 200 frame video into a 50 frame video, a 400 frame video into a 100 frame video if you add it on four. Right now, this is fairly short. I just got this video off Pexels. It's a public domain video. You can get a lot of great images and videos from Pexels. I'll put a link for that as well. So I'm going to leave this at one and go ahead and hit play there. Then you want to enter your prompt here under this section, animation prompts. And I have a very simple prompt here, a female Android robot by Bruce Pennington and run it, run everything all the way down. Now let me show you the next important thing you need to change if you don't want your frame changing every one. Under seed behavior, don't pick iteration or random, have it fixed. That way it'll make every image kind of look like more like the previous one. We'll be changing the seed with every image. So, and I have my sampler here. I'm not sure what difference that makes. We'll see which one of these, we'll just leave it at that. That's the quickest one. And then we just hit run. Oh wait, let me change my output file here. Yeah, I'll put A100 video for the tutorial. Okay. And, oh yeah, one other thing here, the strength. So if you watch my tutorial on using starting images, you use the strength here to determine how much it changes the image. The same thing will apply here to the video. So I'm going to put it at, let's put it at 0.4 and see what that looks like. Actually, let me do this. Let me just put it up to 1. Just to show you, if you haven't watched that other one, you don't want to make starting images, you just want to make starting video. This will just render it. It will look exactly like the original video. So here it is, completely unchanged. It'll render it fast, but it's not going to change it, so we don't want that. And let me show you the other extreme really quick. I'll put strength of 0.1. Now it's going to hardly look anything like the original video. So there's not much point to make in a video, unless you want to do something really abstract. And maybe it might, you know, you can turn it low and just still keep the color palette or whatever, but we'll see. This should not look hardly anything like our original video. Yeah. Doesn't look at all if she had a profile view. It's kind of keeping the colors, but we don't want that either. Let's try right up the middle now at 0.5 strength. So this should be a half and half. It'll be changing it, yet keeping it somewhat the same as well. Let's see if that is too low or too high. Oh boy, this is rendering quick too. That looks about right. It still looks like our initial video somewhat, but it has changed it. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and I'll come back when this is done and show you our video. Okay guys, I did change my mind a little bit. It was going to render 600 frames. So I'm actually putting this to two. So it'll only render about 300 frames. And then another thing I'm doing that you can speed it up a little bit. The other thing is that the more of the original video it keeps, the quicker it'll render because at 0.5, it's going to be rendering 
half of the frames on each, which is going to be 40. But if I put this like up to 0.9, that would only render like, you know, um, 10 frames per animation. So we, it, the higher you can get this, the better. Let's try it at 0.6. And this will be kind of quick. Let's see what that looks like. This will just speed up the render time here a bit. Even with the A100, it was going to take a while. So here we go. And now we're only rendering. Let's see. Uh, it still says 600 frames. Let me go make sure I ran that cell. Oh, I forgot to run it. Always remember to run your changes after you make them or they will not take effect. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do this one more time here. Okay, there we go. That looks great. Okay, and if you notice now it says rendering animation frame three out of 323. So by skipping every other frame, you won't get as many frames per second, of course, but it'll greatly speed up your rendering time. And since you're kind of changing the video anyways, it probably won't be that noticeable. I also have things like um, Topaz where I can upscale the frames per second resolution and everything. So I'll probably do that afterwards. But let's go ahead and let this run and I will come back and show you the video when it is finished. Okay, everybody, this is finishing up here, and I'm just going to go down real quick now and just give you a really quick and easy to follow checklist of how to do that. So just run everything like normal. Get your video input file, drag it over here to your folder in your session. Select video input mode under animation. Don't need to worry about the max frames or anything here. Under extract nth frame, again, if you select one and you've got a 400 frame video, it will render 400 frames. If you select two like I did now, it will skip every other frame, so you'll lose a little bit of frames per second, but it'll render quicker. And then take your video file, right click it, copy the path, and then place it there under video input path. Paste it. And then pick your prompt under animation prompts, which is going to be used to modify the video. And then um, scale will have a bit of effect on it as well. The higher the scale, the more it can change the image. So just make sure to balance it. Another good idea is maybe just to do a couple of renders of a still frame from the video. Maybe take just a, a screenshot of one of the frames and run a few images so that you can get your prompt down correctly. And then you pick under strength how much you want it to look like the video. If strength is at 1, it will look 100% like the video. It won't change it much. If strength is at 0.1, it won't look hardly at all like the video. So I have it on 0.6, which is kind of a good middle ground where it still looks a lot like the original video. So it'll still have a lot of coherency, but it's also still changing it. And I probably could have changed it a little more. If you notice, you know, it still does retain quite a few of the features. And the other important thing, again, is that seed behavior. Keep it on fixed or it will render every frame will look different and it'll just be constantly warping and changing because each image it renders will have a different seed. So that's why you want this on fixed and then run it. And that's really all there is to it. And we're just about done here. I will come back and show you the finished video in the closing. Okay, our video is finished rendering and I'll go ahead and post it now. And let's see also if I can just, I normally just get my frames, download my frames, and then make them into an animation myself. But let's see if I can get this create video from frames to work as well. I've just changed my path there a bit. Let's go ahead and run this and see how this works. Okay, looks like the video is loaded up there. Let's just go ahead and run it from here. And there is our finished video. Great. And you can just, that looks like I can't download it there. Nope. Okay, so you can just go and download it in your folder. And there it is. That looks really good, really smooth, still has a lot of coherence to our original video. And so this was really pretty simple, a lot easier than, you know, you might have thought it would be. Let's go ahead now. I'll go ahead and do one more render here, too, just to show you again the strength setting there. And I'm going to change this just so I don't overwrite my old one to two. Okay. So now I'm going to turn down. We're going to have some fun here. I'm going to turn down the strength to point four. But I'm going to compensate for that so it renders a little faster by just rendering every fourth frame. So it'll be a little choppier, but it'll render quicker again. Okay, let's go ahead and run this one.
Okay, there we go. And that has changed it quite a bit, and it's only going to render 160 frames because I, I'm having it skip every fourth frame, so it will be a bit choppy. But let's go ahead and let this run, and we'll come back and check on it. Okay, here it is. Let's go ahead and run it. You can see also we're not getting quite as much consistency with lowering. That could be because of the frame. It's probably more because we lowered that st strength there. So there we go. Yeah, so that could be because we lowered the strength or the skip frames. Most likely I'm guessing it's because of this. So it's using the source video a little bit less with this, which gives a little more freedom, which also is giving it a little more freedom to change. But that's how it goes. It's really simple. Go out and make yourself some videos. Maybe take some video of yourself, turn yourself into a pirate, an android, a talking frog. Who knows? Your imagination's limit. And a big, huge shout out to um, the people making the D forum network. They've now got this notebook up and running with all kinds of features in a very short time. And it's really not just as good as the Disco Diffusion notebook was now. I feel it's better. A lot of the functions are in more logical places now. Like you can control a lot of this stuff right before you do the run. So they have done a fantastic job on this notebook and i'm now going to do something that i really don't want to do but i want to get this video uploaded to you all because a lot of people have been wanting this so i'm going to have to disconnect from my a100 mythical best processor on google here that i've never seen before and it was great to get it and i did run some also some widescreen still images and things like that so i'll be posting a great slideshow next week Okay, thank you for watching, and I'm going to leave you with my quote here that I've actually been saying before, AI art was even a thing, but AI is going to change humanity far more than the Industrial Revolution did, especially in areas like science and things. It's going to do amazing things, scary things, powerful things, possibly, but it is going to change humanity. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your night.